Hi, welcome to Mountain of Models. Um, I'm Chris and today we're going to look at trying to do a quick tutorial on magnetizing um, Games Workshop's Kernoff Hunter arms. Uh, this is hopefully the goal of this is so that you can use both the scythe arms and the bow arms. So you can switch your models between so you can try out both poses and use them for whatever best suits your current army build. Okay, cool. Okay, quick overview of the tools that you need for this. Um, to start with, because you're gluing metal, the magnets, you're going to need to use super glue. So if you're if you're a child or young, uh, you'll need to get um, an adult to help you, as super glue is always messy by accidentally sticking yourself together. And because the magnets are small and you try and get them into quite tight positions, there is a high chance for everyone that you will glue yourself, which is unpleasant and often quite painful. So here we go. So the tools that we're using are our clippers, just for clipping models, because um, it's part of a model assembly, so the model assembly. Um, uh, I think you call them a pin vise, um, with a drill bit, or a drill, I guess. A uh, drill bit, which is the same size as the magnets you're going to use, and uh, some round, uh, rare earth magnets. They don't have to be round, it's just easier with a drill bit. The drill bit can be slightly larger than a magnet, but it's best to try and use one the same size, and if it's smaller, it won't work. Uh, in this case, you can see on my ruler, I'm going to be trying to use um, 2 millimeter magnets. Uh, the size is up to you. Generally, larger magnets have a bigger pull, but also require a larger hole. So it's a balance of getting a large enough size to hold the weight, but not too large. Um, as if you were drilling too wide, you'll, it'll often... Uh, deform the model as it pushes out as you drill it. It's always good to start practicing drilling on test models or old models or spare bits that um, you don't mind breaking. And also as a rule with magnetizing, there's always a chance that it won't work. This is generally because either the placement for magnets too small, so you can't drill a big enough hole or you misalign, um, misalign the hole so the angles between the first and second magnet don't work. Uh, generally in this case I usually find it best to just give up and glue that model or time to be try to use pinning. So yeah, so these are the tools, that's a quick introduction. It has super glue so if you're young you'll need the help of an adult to do this. If you're older, it's often good to have someone around so you don't accidentally super glue yourself to your desk and get stuck. Okay, so quick update. We've just clipped the components off of the sprue which are needed for Kernoff Hunter B. Uh, these are just components um, related to the magnetization rather than the whole model. If you're doing assembly, you can do assembly as normal. Now next we're just going to use a file to file off the points we've clipped and then we're going to assemble the body and then come back. Generally when magnetizing I always find it a good idea to take off both components that you're planning to magnetize and have a look at them. Um, skimming through um, Colonel Hunter A may be slightly more complicated as both the scythe arm and the bow arrow arm share the same shoulder joint. So for this example, I'm going to be looking at magnetizing the shoulder joints. But with that one, you may need to look at using a smaller magnet to complicate to magnetize the elbow joint instead. Um, if I have time, I'll have a look at that. But just for a simple tutorial, uh, Hunter B seems to be a lot easier. Um, okay, so I've got my sort of sub assembly done. So I put together the body. And the bow arm is a one piece arm, as is the secondary arm for the glaive, scythe. 
and I've got the side arm which is a combination of the forearm and the shoulder joint and I've got the other arm for the bow just sort of the releasing hand which again was a shoulder joint and forearm um, what's best to do now I find is with any when you're magnetizing is just to dry fit the components sort of to get an idea of here we go of how easily they're going to go in and where they're going to go things like that finding the thumb is a good trick because that's usually the top so with this guy bow arm goes there I mean, these kits are quite good to start doing magnetization on because they've already got a peg and hole, um, which kind of can give you a guideline of where to place a magnet. It's not necessarily the best place because more central is often good, but with curvature, it's a good outline of where I can put my magnet. Um, also, I think that here the main thing which I was looking for was which of the two options is more difficult and in my opinion the scythe arm is more difficult as you need the two hands to connect while so that goes to the hand and then the other arm comes in here and they connect on the little hand socket there so that's the more complicated of the two which is the one which we'll look at doing first because that being right, or as close to right as possible, is going to be, like I say, most important. Because the other one, the two arms are separate, so if there's a slight angle that you need to maybe add some green stuff or plastic card to here to cover, then that's a lot of less of an issue than your hands not lining up on a two-handed weapon. Okay, so that's sub-assembly done, so now next we're going to just look at magnetization so what we're probably going to do when we come back is we're going to have uh, these um, plugs um, set, uh, cut off and going to be looking at drilling the hole to add the magnet in. Okay so coming back I've now uh, drilled a hole here um, and placed the first magnet in the body. I haven't done this side yet and I've placed the magnet in the side arm. Um, I've also got a hole in the non bow arm, which I haven't yet put a magnet in. In general, you want the hole to be so the magnet generally fits um, flush, so it's not sticking out or sticking out as little as possible. Um, really you want it just to be flush so the two magnets make contact uh, for the best hold um, so yeah so that's the first magnet in and yeah I'm quite happy with the placement of that I can see by dry fitting the other arm it lines up quite well So, what we're going to do next is put a magnet in this arm uh, for the bow pose, um, check that magnet fits, and then look at putting magnets in the other side. Okay, so uh, we're all done now, so we'll have a look at what we've got done. So, magnet-wise now, there's a um, magnet added to the... All the arms now so this is the other bow arm magnet in there pretty much flush and for that there's a magnet in the bow arm as well and the other arm for the side so it's magnet there magnet there this magnets slightly like I would have preferred it to be more flush but it worked out fine anyway it's just slightly too deep set um, so if we put them together we we'll see like bow arm goes here and back goes there there you go got a pretty much perfect looking archer um, yeah, and then obviously once we've got magnetized we continue with assembly so this bit goes 
put your glue in here. Um, so they can go sit there for a minute. And then with the scythe arm, scythe, scythe goes there. And um, that way goes there. Um, with this, the wrist pretty much just will align perfectly. I think once it's painted, it'll be fine. Um, because the top bit's going on, I'd probably not glue the wrist, just so you can easily move the arms in and out, so you don't get caught by the socket. Because at the moment it would slide, but once the sort of neck rim is on, then the slide action wouldn't work anymore because it would be locked in. So I'd not glue the wrist, i just leave it like that. But that is, a hopefully, alright tutorial on how to magnetise the arms of Colonel Panther. So yeah, so once the arms are magnetised, then continue with the rest of the model assembly, adding the um, shoulder, shoulder pads to the arms, and yeah, legs, head, the rest of it. And yeah, so that's that. Um, things just to um, cover is the main mistake which is made when magnetizing is losing one's magnets. This is a good example of that. Um, is messing up the polarity because um, you need to obviously the positive and the negative need to attract. So if you end up with a positive to a positive, then the joint would repel and it wouldn't work. And that, I think, is the main mistake with magnetization. Often it's good to, A, always check. So what I generally do is I'll glue the body magnets and then I'll test the attraction um, before before gluing the magnet into the arm socket. Um, if you get into magnetization or just a sensible, a good good tricks are just build up something where this is a bad example of magnets, but generally put paint on one end so you always know that's the positive or the negative. Or what I've been doing today is I've just been using my magnetic my metal ruler. So when I put in an arm socket I put it that way and if I put it on the other side I put it that way just so that I know whether I'm on positive or negative from what I've been doing last. Um, so yeah, so hopefully that helps. Um, it's our first video tutorial and we're not going to be doing much editing so it's not going to connect too well. But I mean, yeah, so any criticism, ideas, comments, feedbacks, thumbs up are great. Um, this has been Mountain of Models. Um, thanks for listening. I hope to catch up with you next time. Bye.